so as you can see if we try to pull this beam from inside the beam cross section as representing this as a pre-stressing tendon so what happens it will if we try to pull this thing it will try to tighten up in this manner so what is happening as we know that the shear force is the main causing effect to the shear stress so what is shear force actually it is a vertical force which is putting actually it is a vertical force which is pushing one part of a body in one direction and another part of the body in the opposite direction so shear force acting on a substance in a direction perpendicular to the extension of the substance so what is happening this is always try to cut it cut it to in a cross sectional wise so what is happening the elements or all the infinitesimal layer which is situated in this beam is always trying to resist this shear force and this kind of resistance is actually a developed shear stress so the more the shear force is applied on this beam the more we can expect the shear stress developed into this beam so what is happening in this case that if we try to pull this beam in this direction it will try to act in this manner and in due to this due to this thing what's happening the shear stress inside this beam is changing so in order to detect the shear stress in this beam we need to just check on a, a single element from this beam like as you can say that we can consider a single as infinitesimal element and we can check that check that element and evaluate the all um, evaluate all the shear strength of the beam representing that element so this is a typical schematic diagram of a pre stress concrete beam representing the three kind of failures so this kind of failures representing the term b which is representing the flexural shear cracks where the movement and the shear force is moderate in this case these two values are moderate in this case mean th these are quite equal to each other not exactly but it's closer to equal now in this case mean in the very mid span of the section the contributing failure which you can see here represented by a is known as a flexural cracks mean here the actual failure contribution is totally by the bending failure so here the moment is higher than the shear so in this case this region uh, the failure is represented as a flexural crack and in this case as you can see here this kind of crack is also known as a web shear cracks where m by v ratio mean the moment by shear force ratio is low mean here the shear force is greater than the bending moment of this beam so in this case the failure due to web shear cracks is also represented by our indian standard code which is is 1343 1980 here the formula representing the failure due to web shear crack is represented as in this manner vcw equal to 0.67 bw h root over whole whole square whole of ft whole square plus 0.8 fcp ft in which the value of 0.67 h is i mean this 0.67 and h is somewhat lower for flanged section 
this together with reduced value of 0.8 FCP. Here BW is representing the breadth of web of a member, H is overall depth of a member, F T is the tensile strength of concrete, FCP is the compressive pre-stress at the centroid of a section and this whole formula you can get in IS 1343-1980 clause 22.4.1. Let me discuss you another formula which is representing the failure due to flexural shear cracks. Well, here this equation is representing this kind of when we calculate this kind of crack or this kind of failure, we have to accompany this formula in our numerical method where VCF representing the section crack shear resistance of sections cracked in flexure where FPE is the effective pre-stress after all losses which shall not be put greater than 0.6 FP. FP is what? It is characteristic strength of pre-stressing steel. And tau C, what is tau C? It is the ultimate shear stress capacity of concrete. What is BW? It is breadth of the member which for flanged sections shall be taken as the breadth of the web. D is the effective depth of tendons. M0 is the moment necessary to produce zero stress in the concrete at the extreme tension fiber. M0 is to be calculated as 0.8 FT I by YB where FT is the concrete compressive stress at the extreme tension fiber due to effective pre-stressing force. I is the second moment of area of the section and YB is the distance of the extreme tension fiber from centroid of the beam section. And this V and M is the shear force and the bending moment respectively at the section. So, <coughs> this formula you can get in the IS 1343-1980 clause number 22.4.2. So, using all these formulas, we will do our problem in the next videos then it will be quite a clear uh, view you can have while doing the numeric numerical on this topic so in order to eradicate the shear failure we need to provide the shear reinforcement which we have already studied in our rcc classes and now we will also study in our pre-stress class that how to design a shear reinforcement providing in the pre-stressing concrete beam. So before designing a shear reinforcement let me tell you that this is also provided in our IS 1343-1980 code and the clause where it is given is 22.4.3 where this formula is also given where this formula is representing the um, here SV is representing the stirrup spacing along the length of the member and ASV is representing the total cross-sectional area of a stirrup legs effective in shear and FY as we know that it is the characteristic strength of a stirrup reinforcement which shall not be taken greater than 415 Newton per millimeter square and B is the breadth of the member which for T or I and L beams should be taken as the breadth of the rib BW. 
here for in the case if the shear force is less than 0.5 vc what is vc it is the ultimate shear strength so if the shear force is less than the half of the ultimate shear strength and in a member of a minor importance shear reinforce it is not needed to be provided so when v exceeds mean when the shear force mean actually the shear force which is subjected to the beam this is this exceeds the ultimate shear resistance mean the shear resistance which is provided by the beam and this is the subjected the external shear force provided into the beam if that v exceeds the vc shear reinforcement is required conforming to this relation okay where dt equal to the depth of the extreme compression fiber either to the longitudinal bar or to the centroid of tendons whichever is greater so here by this table you can evaluate the maximum shear stress 